Hey everybody, hey everybody, me Keith, Elder Rock, back on the bench starting a new series. So hey, this is going to be part one of the Nintendo vs. System series. Back home in Indiana, I have seven red tents. I want to restore all seven. Uh, and so I'm gonna, we're going to make a whole series on fixing everything Nintendo vs. So what is Nintendo vs.? What is Nintendo versus the Nintendo versus system? Well, Nintendo in 1984 were having pretty good success with their Famicom uh, console in Japan, and then 85 we saw the North American release of the NES, and Nintendo had been putting out machines in the arcade for quite a while, and the, the Donkey Kongs, the Mario Brothers, a uh, handful of other really popular games. So they decided to re-engineer their arcade board into a versus, a versus system. So basically, what is a versus system? So the versus system, so this is part one, this is part one, and we're gonna start with the MDS board, and I think this will help clarify what a versus system is. So the MDS system stands for multi-display system. So basically, each PCB, each versus board, has two sides, player one, side one, side two, or player one, player two, and it could feed two monitors, two separate games, two monitors, and that's what we see in the stand-up version, it's a pretty big thing, and then we also see the dual monitor in the cocktail version, and then they had the unit system, which uses the MDS board, only populated on half for the upright Unisystem cabinet. So in this part, we're going to take a deeper dive into the MDS board, the components, the parts, what it takes to um, have these guys all running. So throughout the series, this is part one, and uh, the upcoming episodes, we're going to troubleshoot 11, 11 MDS boards I have, and we're going to check PPUs, CPUs in the, next, in the first few parts, and we'll go from there. We're going to be doing a lot of fun things with the PPU and CPU. And I just want to take this time. Like the, the Versus system has been well documented. And some of my favorite online resources is What's Ken Making? He's made an incredible series on the Famicom hardware, which is so similar to this. So if you want to know more about the architecture, the PPU, CPU, uh, he can't be outclassed. He's got a great tutorial. Um, Jack Licks Arcade, he has a lot of great versus repairs. Um, Todd, he's got a lot of great versus repairs. There's a lot of versus stuff out there. John's Arcade and his website is a great resource for all things Nintendo versus the ROMs, the CPUs, the variants. Then you have other resources, the, the NES Dev Wiki has a great breakdown of all of the CPUs, PPUs, their instruction codes and suffixes, kind of what they all go to and stuff like that. But in the first episode, part one here, we're going to take a, a, a deeper look into the MDS board and what the components and parts. So as, as you troubleshoot your own boards at home, keep in mind if you have certain problems, you know, you can look in certain sections. These boards are not very complicated, to be honest. So... Um, follow along and maybe learn some stuff to maintain and repair your board. But before we get started, I'm going to do a quick quick run through. We're going to do a quick walkthrough um, for the series. Uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time here on the bench. We have 11 boards to test. And then over here is the, what some of the stuff in the next couple videos. We're going to test all these PPUs. going to test all the PPUs. CPUs, these are the 04 blanks, don't worry about those yet, um, get more into those later. We're going to do an episode on RAMs, how to, how to burn them, and how, they're, um, how they fit in with the board, 
how to safely install, maintain, and, and, and take care of your ROMs, your software set. Then we have a bunch of daughter boards that we're going to populate, test and populate. So let's let's go back in. I'll show you the I'll show you the stack of boards that we're gonna work through. Just gonna make a bunch of short parts. So in here I think we have eleven oh we have ten nine nine boards in here. So we have different MDS versions, O twos, O threes we have o fours and then we have o fives and we'll talk a bit about the nuances of these boards what the difference is in is if any but i'll show you one one i picked up off the bat um a lot of these boards don't have two big axial capacitors here um one's 12 volts one's five volts but they actually on some boards, they brought in a, a filter cap for the 24 volts that feeds your coin counter. So if you have three capacitors here, you just have an extra capacitor probably to filter out the 24 volts for the coin counter. You can see a lot of these other boards just have the 11 and 5. So, okay, so that's going to be our mission in the short term. Is We're going to go through some of the components, part one, MDS board. Then I think we're going to do some other videos. We're going to do a separate video on CPU and, and PPU, ROMs, and maybe go through these sections a little bit. And we'll talk about the test setup here um, in a later video. So without further ado, let's jump into let's jump into the MDS board. So we have the MDS board here and how it was laid out and designed by Nintendo. And you can kind of see like it's two different sides. You have player one and player two, and there's the, the circuitry is mirror image. So when we're troubleshooting, if you know what side you're on, you need to know what side to look on. And let's take a closer look. So we have the player one and player two processing sides where your CPU, your video, and your software runs. Then we have a section that is dedicated to video, your video output. Uh, video is fed from the PPU into the circuitry here. Then we have audio sections for side one and side two here in the blue and the, and the red with the big arrows. One audio chip per side mono. And then the edge connector, which have a lot of carry many different signals. But again, troubleshooting, it's good to know what each edge connector is doing. So let's take a closer look at player one, each side, mirror image. This is where your CPU and PPU, the locations of them, where they'll be seated. This is where most of your processing is happening, using the ROMs, the RAMs, and the microprocessors actually run your game, make it boot and display your characters. And then here we have a bank of dedicated logic ICs just for side one. A lot of your control signals, your NMI, your interrupts, and some other stuff. So side two is a mirror image. You know, locations of your CPU and your PPU, the architecture, the traces, pretty, pretty much mirror image. And again, your bank of RAMs and your two ROM chips which we'll get into a little bit later, and again, a dedicated bank of logic ICs that control a lot of the, um, the functions of the CPU and PPU, and a lot of the read writes and stuff like that for the memory. Okay, video circuits. So this is where the Nintendo, your inverted colors are created in those ICs there, um, fed in straight from the CPU. Okay, audio circuits, you can kind of see a little bit better. LM3900, one op amp for each side. Mono sound, pretty simple circuit, comes right from the CPU. Okay, then the edge connectors, and you can see a list of the, the, the signals that are carried on the 44 pin, pretty much all of your voltage, your, your color, and the other connector more for controls. So your controls, this is the section where your controls interact with the your data bus. So all your control, your pull-ups, resistors, buffer happen there. So basically the whole board makes two separate games and you'd have side one, side two on your 
on your versus system. Another reference I wanted to make in this part one video for our future video is the similarities between the console NES, Famicom, and NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, and the versus board. So if we kind of come in here, I got the tops off of these Famicoms. You can see it has a CPU with the same Rico chip number with a different um, suffix. So that suffix is really just gonna tell tell you the difference in instructions on this on this CPU, and it does have a PPU as well. But these PPUs only put out a composite or like chroma signal, where the Versus puts out these are RGB outputs, and that's the mod. If you want to mod these for RGB, you bring over a PPU from a Versus board, and they have kits out there. So really, the only difference is. Um, your ROM set is stored on a cartridge, but your memory, this is only 2K of memory. This is a 2116 versus a 6116 on the Versus system. I was hoping to be able to use these, but I cannot use those on the Versus. And uh, yeah, you have some logic. So essentially, Nintendo, they took this and they made this. So they really just put two consoles on one board. Four controllers, same thing as what we just looked at. And give you two, two video outputs, one for each monitor. Yeah, I wanted to make a reference of that because we're going to come back to the, some of the Famicom interoperability testing in future parts. Okay, going on to the next section of this video of part one here. I wanted to just cover the schematics briefly. Uh, because we went through the different sections of the PCB, and if you're working on your PCB, you're going to get very familiar with the schematics, and I can, I'm going to run you through some stuff that's not on what we previously looked at. So you can kind of st uh, still see it's very, very much player one, player two, master side, slave side, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it uh, side one or side two. Player one, player two, something like that. Okay, so let's kind of go in here a little bit. So on the schematics, this is your player one side. So let's go a little bit closer here. Um, you can see your C CPU and your PPU, all your addressing lines. Um, so you're going to get familiar with these. Uh, here you have your RGB, red, green, blue, feeds right out of the... Uh, PPU, excuse me if I had that backwards, PPU feeds right over, we're just going to come over, I'm going to go into the video circuit. So this is player one video circuit, we kind of zoom out, and then player two video circuit is here. So if we go to player two, RGB output, those that will feed these circuits, and I think sync is in here too, yes, sync is in here too. So anyway, let's go back up here, CPU, PPU, uh, then you have a shift register, and you, then you have your program ROMs, I'm trying to see, I'm having a hard time here. Actually, these, these are your character ROMs here, and then these guys are your program ROMs. So you have your bank of ROMs, CPU, PPU. Yeah, PPU, CPU, excuse me, and you have your one one chip we didn't talk about. No, this is the chip, uh, RAM at 1E. Okay, other sections I wanted to point out here. Um, let's just go cover what we can here. So this is your controller section that we've seen previously. All of the capacitors, that whole bank of capacitors, your... Um, address your your access to your data bus from all your controls player one player two and what else was I going to show you so there's another RAM this is the RAM that we did not see in my other diagram but this is the only RAM that's common for both sides and he he does a lot of the the boot up stuff so and then you have 165s uh, address decoders and banks of those. We'll look at on the real board here in a minute. So this is separate from side one, side two. This is his own boot up uh, circuitry here. And I think that's about it. Audio, uh, very simple circuit. 
you have an op amp, a uh, mono owl, and if we follow that back around, the sounds come from um, your CPU pin one and two, and they feed directly your audio off independently for each side. So again, the video circuit, let's, let's spend some time here. I wanted to talk about the video circuit because uh, we have our transistors, like the main components. We have our op amps that do the inversion. There's a switch and uh, basically red, green, and blue coming in, they're not inverted. At this point, here, here, and here, you can grab those uh, with a regular, with a regular um, inversion on it, and, or no inversion, and use an amplifier like the Frankencade RGB amplifier, and you can amplify those and then feed your monitor like that. But honestly, I don't recommend it because that is tied directly to your PPU and I'm not sure loading that down um, you know might overstress that PPU and since they're so hard to find I'd be careful doing that but you can I did it and, and um, but I just decided to use an inverter circuit instead but each each section here is, is, is pretty clear-cut it makes it easy for troubleshooting easy to test these NPN PNP transistors inputs and outputs of the op amp and that switch so pretty pretty easy troubleshooting there um, down here you have sound for your B side just that simple circuit again okay now I'll trying to wrap things up here let's go to a real board I have running so here we have um, one running and I was gonna point out some stuff here uh, at F1 this is your this is a um, chip select for this bank of ROM, so that's high on the list of things you know to keep your eyes on and check. And I believe each each RAM kind of runs its own bank here. They interact with each other with their control signals, but this RAM is more controlling read writing from this bank. This RAM is from this bank, but they they do have functions within each uh, to each other and actually to the other RAM. So let's go up to the other RAM we didn't look at in the diagram. So this is the one RAM we just talked about on the schematic. So he's going to be doing a lot of the the boot up the boot up operations when the CPU starts reading and writing. He's going to hit here and then he's going to let everything else kind of boot up and do its thing. So that is really about everything I wanted to go through. Um get back up here into the video section anything else you can also grab sync from our our ah, one of these resistors here for side one and side two you can grab sync there too if you need so get familiar with these for troubleshooting you know there you have like garbage on the screen or it's not booting it's going to boot really you're probably going to get two major major issues not booting and then booting with garbage Booting with garbage, um, start checking your ROMs, your sockets, stuff like that. Um, could be your chip selects not working right. Like some games, you can have a dead ROM and the game will still run. Sometimes if one ROM is bad, the game won't even run. But you can check your signals there and see how far you're booting. Same thing with all these logic chips. These We're going to get into these. These are just um, logic gates. I think there's some... Uh, NORs, some exclusive one, uh, gates. We'll get into that later. And I was going to point out this guy at 1J. He, this guy here, he's like this Lone Ranger. He's part of your reset circuit. I should have showed you that, but he's part of the reset circuit, which is pretty, pretty easy on this board. Okay, so I think that is going to wrap it up for part one, the MDS board. I hope you guys found that found that useful and we're just going to get we're going to cut this here and get right into part two